friends, my name is Sarah and today we're talking about trilogies I recommend. I'm jumping in for the first time on the monthly recommendations group which was started by Trina from Between Chapters and Kayla Rain. I will link all the info to that group down below if you would like to join us. Basically every single month we choose a different topic and share our recommendations for that particular topic and for the month of November we are talking trilogies. Up first, if you love dystopian novels, the super obvious answer is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Obviously, if you have watched my channel before, especially if you watch any of my videos from last week, you know that I really love the Hunger Games series, and I actually did a full series review of the three books on Friday in honor of the release of Mockingjay Part 2, so if you want to hear individual or more in-depth thoughts on what I think of this series as a whole, you can check that out. The Hunger Games was the first dystopian series that I ever read, and it was also the first more contemporary series that I had read in a really long time. And the movies were coming out, and I heard a lot of people talking about it and the premise sounded really interesting so I borrowed them from a co-worker and just kind of fell in love with them. Again, everyone talks about this series but if you like dystopia and you like young adult stuff and if you like social commentary because that's really what this series is then I highly recommend you check this one out. The next super obvious one is for those who love fantasy and that is The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I reread The Lord of the Rings in August and September of this year and was reminded of just how much I absolutely love that series. It is the first fantasy series that I ever read and prior to reading it I really didn't think I was a fantasy person but Tolkien completely proved me wrong and I just absolutely adore everything about that series. I recognize that it can be a little bit intimidating because the book are long and there's a lot of words and you know Tolkien is pretty verbose and very descriptive so particularly if you are not someone who's read a lot of classic literature and is not used to that kind of writing style then I totally get that they can be a little bit intimidating but I would still recommend that you read them partially just because they're classics and are wonderful and incredible stories but no one has matched Tolkien in his world building. Like, he is the grandfather of the fantasy genre as we know it today, and it is totally worth the characters, the story, the world building, everything to push through those denser parts and just experience the incredibleness that is Middle Earth and all of the things that come with it. Up next, the Anne and the French Kiss series by Stephanie Perkins. This is a series that I would recommend for people who really enjoy YA romance. I read the first two books, Anne of the French Kiss and Lola and the Boy Next Door, last summer, and then I read Isla and the Happily Ever After in September of this year, and I just loved all three stories. They are what you might call fluffy fiction in the sense that they don't necessarily examine or explore really deep philosophical themes or questions or anything like that, but they're just really, really fun. I really love the characters that she created in these books. I read all of them, I think, except for Isla in one sitting, and the only reason I didn't read Isla in one sitting is because I started it so late in the day and I needed to sleep, but these, these books are just a lot of fun and they are the perfect read if you just need something that is going to make you feel happy and warm and fuzzy inside and yeah, I just, they're wonderful. This particular trilogy is a companion trilogy and not a chronological trilogy, so you don't have to read Anna to read Lola to read Isla or anything like that. All of the characters are very loosely connected to each other, which I think is a lot of fun in this particular series because you still get snippets of the characters you've come to know and love in Anna when you're reading Lola and the same with Isla, but you also get to experience these brand new, vibrant, wonderful characters and relationships and yeah. So basically if you're looking for something that's just going to make you feel warm and fuzzy inside, pick these ones up. This next trilogy is one that I recommend for people that enjoy thrillers, and that is The Bourne Trilogy by Robert Ludlum. You will notice that I only have two books because I don't actually own The Bourne Identity, which I should probably remedy really quickly, but anyway, you might be somewhat familiar with The Bourne Trilogy if you have seen any of the movies that came out, and that is when I first started reading this series. My older sister and I were watching either Identity or Supremacy, and my dad came downstairs and was like, you know that's a book series, right? And I was like, no, and he told me a little bit more about it, and I picked them up, and I absolutely loved these books. 
The Bourne Trilogy books are very, very different than the Bourne Trilogy movies. The general arc of the Bourne Trilogy films, where Jason Bourne loses his memory and, you know, is being chased by the CIA and eventually figures out who he is at the end of the third movie, that is the arc of the first book. And so the other two books are totally different stories, and there's like a whole other villain in the series that they cut out of the movie, and it's just, they're just fantastic stories, and I absolutely love Ludlum's writing. I haven't read them in a few years, but I remember when I read them that I was super intrigued by them. I remember them being relatively fast-paced for the most part, and the thing that I really loved about these books in particular is I didn't see a lot of the twists and turns coming. He kept me guessing from start to finish with pretty much every single book in this series. If you like thrillers, you need to check these ones out. My final recommendation today is for those who love historical and Christian fiction, and that is The Mark of the Lion series by Francine Rivers. I read this series for the first time in 2007, and I have read it several times in the years since. It is a historical Christian fiction series that takes place primarily in and around Rome, right around the first century, near-ish the reign of Nero. We follow four different characters throughout the series. Hadassah, who is a Messianic Jew, captured during the fall of Jerusalem to Rome. Marcus and Julia, who are son and daughter of a Roman aristocratic family. And Atreides, who is a German barbaric warrior who is captured and trained to be a gladiator. And really the main crux of the story is how Hadassah's faith comes to affect all of the people that she interacts with, primarily Marcus, Julia, and Atreides, and I just absolutely adore this series. I love Francine Rivers' writing. She is without a doubt my favorite Christian fiction writer. The first two books of this series in particular are some of my absolute, absolute favorites that she's written. If you really enjoy the historical fiction stuff, if you also like a little bit of intrigue and some romance and things like that, then I would highly recommend that you pick this series up because it's just wonderful. So there you have it, friends. Those are my trilogy recommendations for the month of November. If you have read any of these trilogies, I would love to hear your thoughts on them below. And if you have any trilogies that you think I should read, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye! Jersey, you've come to know, know what so there you have it, friends. Those are my trilogy recommendations. Oh, what is happening? What is happening with my voice? I don't, I don't even understand what is happening with my voice.